people went out and gathered quail. No one gathered less than 10 homers, which is about one and a half tons. Then they spread them all out over the ground. The Lord's arm wasn't too short. They had quail by the million. Quail and quail and quail, and they were sick of quail. Then a little bit further on, we read in Numbers, uh, sorry, in Deuteronomy 8, verse 4, that God provided them with clothes, and, and they didn't wear out. And he looked after their feet and their shoes, and they didn't wear out. Forty years. They'd be pretty dirty, but they didn't wear out, because they couldn't go to the shop and buy a new pair if they wanted them. Then we talk, to, talk about Jonah. You think, Jonah? How does the Lord provide for Jonah? I don't know how many times the word provided is in Jonah, but in one chapter 1, verse 17, remember the story briefly, he, had, he was told to go to Nineveh to warn them that problems were going to come upon the city because they had disobeyed God. And, and Jonah took a chopper, he went to Joppa, and he got on a boat, and away he went, and the storm came up. And Jonah realized that the storm was because of him, because he had disobeyed God. And they said, throw me over. And eventually they did. And then in verse 17 it says, God provided a fish. Isn't that amazing? God provided a fish. It's in uh, page 817 in your Bibles if you want to find Jonah. It's pretty hard to find. So Jonah got swallowed by the fish. And interesting, just a couple of weeks ago on the news, somebody actually went into the mouth of a whale. Their whole body went into the whole mouth of a whale. It can happen. But then an interesting ha thing happens in chapter 2, verse 10. God commanded the fish to vomit up Jonah. The interesting thing was he didn't just vomit him up in the middle of the ocean where he would have drowned anyway. He vomited him onto dry land. Now that's not normal for a fish to come up to dry land and spit out something onto the, onto the dry land. Jonah ended up on the land. And then the story went on and Jonah, he got the message and he went to Nineveh and he warned the people about all the problems to come. And then he went out into the, into the desert and then he sat there in the sun and he got really hot. And then verse, chapter 4 verse 6 it says, God provided a leafy plant and it grew up. I'm not sure that it grew up in one day, but it grew up very, very quickly. It's possible that this tree was a, a castor oil plant, which are very, very fast growing, and they have leaves about this sort of big. It's possible that that was the, that was the plant that grew. And that was fine. But then in verse 7, it says God provided a worm. And the worm came along to the plant, and it chewed through it until the, worm, until the plant died. And then in verse 8, God provided a hot wind. So poor old Jonah's sitting out there, full sun, hot wind, pretty frustrated. And he, he was frustrated because he had gone and warned the Ninevites that God was going to judge them all and, and get rid of them all. But then God had changed his mind, and he was frustrated, and God was teaching him a lesson. Then we go over to Kings and Elijah. I talked about Elijah, I think, during lockdown. I think it was my first talk. It's still on YouTube. I had a look the other day. And we talked about Elijah. God told him when the, when the uh, famine was on, the, the drought was on, to go out to the little brook called Cherith, and he will provide Elijah with water and with bread and with meat. And God did. And Elijah stayed out there for a long time. And the ravens used to bring in the bread and the meat. And that's pretty unusual because a raven is a scavenged bird like a seagull. But they picked up meat and they picked up bread and they took it and delivered it to Elijah. And then we can look at David. Psalm 23. As a, I've been going to church all my life. And as a little kid at Sunday school, we had to learn Psalm 23. And if you go to a funeral, and particularly a non-Christian funeral, often they will read Psalm 23. I'm not quite sure why, but people seem to know Psalm 23, and it gets read a lot. And it's interesting, I've sort of been looking into Psalm 23 a bit in the last couple of weeks, and learned a lot about Psalm 23. I used to think, oh, here we go again. I've heard it so many times. We used to sing the old hymn in church, Psalm, you know, the Lord's my shepherd, and... But as I've looked into it, I thought, what an amazing verse. And it's interesting, God provided in an unusual way. This week, on Friday Friday afternoon, I went across to see my neighbour, nice old guy, and we, we go over and we have a 
talk about the rugby a bit and who's going to win and what's your score. And then his wife was there and she came and she says, oh, Ted, they're Christian people. And she said, look, I just saw this amazing video the other night at our home group on Psalm 23. You need to look at it. I thought, Psalm 23, that's what I'm studying at the moment. So I went home and I, I did have a look at it. It was absolutely really good. So Psalm 23, it's 485 in your Bibles. And there's a whole lot of st stuff that God does for David. Remember, David's just a young shepherd boy out, out in the country looking after his sheep. And the first thing he says in verse 1, The Lord is my shepherd. Everyone has a shepherd. Wonder what the shepherd is. Wonder who the shepherd is. Wonder what it is. What is it that we're putting our trust in? But David says, the Lord, he's my shepherd. David knew what a shepherd was because he was one. And as you know, in the Eastern times, they didn't have a couple of hunterway dogs and a shepherd's whistle and shout and scream and whistle and get the dogs to move the sheep. The sheep, the shepherd would walk along and he would call his sheep and they would follow the shepherd. David knew what it was to have the Lord at his shepherd because he would lead him and he would follow him. He says, the Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. Well, the King James Version says, I shall not want I lack nothing. Provision. God provides everything we need. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads, he leads me beside the quiet waters. That's rest. He not only provides, he gives us rest. He refreshes my soul. What is it to be refreshed? How do we get refreshed? Do we come home from work and a couple of red wines or a couple of beers or five cups of coffee to relax after a busy day's work? The Lord says he leads us beside still waters. He restores my soul. He guides me along the right path for his namesake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, his protection. For you are with me. There's comfort, there's friendship, there's relationship. You and your rod, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You anoint my head with oil, anointing blessings. Your, my cup overflows with blessings. Surely your goodness, and we've just been singing about the goodness of God, and your love, so we've got goodness, blessings, love, will follow me all the days of my life. There's security, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Eternal. It's not just a provision that's going to last five minutes. It's not that that red wine or that three cups of coffee that's going to last you for a few minutes or a couple of hours. This is will dwell with the Lord forever. Love, security, protection, blessings. Let's have a look at some verses in the New Testament. We're up to slide number three. Elias, if you're still there, I can't see what's happening there. John 10, verse 10. It says that Jesus says that he's going to give us life to the full. Abundant, fulfilling life. We don't need anything else. Jesus is giving us life to the full. 10, John 10, 10. 1 Peter 1 verse 3 says God has given us everything we need for a godly life. Everything we need for a godly life. I've got another verse here which isn't on the slide. It's 1 Corinthians 10 verse 13, which is an amazing verse which every Christian should learn. And it says something like, "Not let uh, Jesus, God, will not let you be tempted beyond, beyond what you can bear, but will always provide a way of escape when we're tempted. I don't know about you, but I'm tempted all the time. It just never seems to go away. Temptations of all sorts. But 
that's an encouraging verse that God will never let us be tempted beyond what we can withstand and he will always provide a way of escape Matthew 6 verse 33 you probably all know the verse seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added to you what are all those things if you read the previous verses it's what we eat what we drink and the clothes we wear God will provide Matthew 7 verse 11 says the father will give to those who ask and it also says in the Bible, you don't receive because you don't ask. Ask, in the door, uh, ask and it will be given to you. Philippians 4.19, I think this was in the, the, the newsletter this week, God will supply all your needs. Psalm 34 verse 9 to 10, fear and seek the Lord and you will lack nothing. I wonder if David wrote that word. Tying up with Psalm 23, he gives everything I need. Psalm 107 verse 9 says he satisfies the thirsty and he fills the hungry. Psalm 37 verse 4, be delighted in the Lord and he will give you your heart's desire. I could tell you a big story about that verse, but I, I won't today. Remember, God may provide differently to expected. God provides our needs, not our greeds, not our wants. He provides what we need. And sometimes it's not just how we expect it or how we asked. There was a man who was shipwrecked on a desert island. And he was there by himself on this island away at the back of nowhere. And he was there for a long time and every day he would pray to God, God, send me a ship. Let me be rescued. And after a while he had found a lot of driftwood and stuff on the beach and he had built a little shelter. And this day he went away to search for some food to see what he could find to eat. And as he came back, he saw the smoke in his house, his little hut had burnt to the ground. And he was desperate and he cried out the Lord, help me. So he went to sleep for the night and he woke up in the morning with a noise and he heard a ship coming into the bay. And as they rescued him, he said to he says, how did you know I was here? And they said, oh, we saw your smoke signal yesterday. We don't know how God is going to provide for our needs. And God not only provides things, but he provides things like guidance and direction and hope. He provides hands to work. He's given us abilities. We can do our gardening, we can grow our food. He's given the ability to earn. He gave his brains to think. I remember an accountant said to me many years ago, he says, Ted, you don't make money with your hands, you make it with your head. And he was probably right. <laughs> I used my hands all my life, it didn't make much, but never mind. He gives us brains to think, to make wise choices, to make good decisions. And in James it tells us if we ask for wisdom, he will give us wisdom. And I read Proverbs a lot because I really enjoy the book of Proverbs. In Proverbs 20 verse 4 and Proverbs 10 verse 4 it says, Lazy hands make for poverty. Diligent hands bring wealth. And there's a lot of verses in Proverbs about being lazy. And the lazy man never gets ahead. And God may provide through other means of what, what we think. Interesting enough, he may provide through inland revenue with a tax um, rebate that you didn't expect. He may provide through your family, maybe through your church. He provided Israel with food for 400 years through Pharaoh, through the Egyptian kings. A man was in his house and it started to flood. There was big floods and it started to come into his house and he started praying, Lord, Lord, save me. And a guy came past in a four-wheel drive and he says, quick, come in here, come in here, we'll take you to safety. And the guy says, no, no, the Lord will, the Lord will save me. But later he was on the t kitchen table and he was still praying, Lord, save me, save me. And a guy came past in a little boat and he says, quick, jump in, I'll take you to safety. He says, no, no, the Lord will save me. But lady is on the roof and he's still praying, God save me. And a helicopter came past 
drop the rope to him. He says, grab the rope. He says, no, no, the Lord will look after me. Later on when he got to heaven after he had drowned, he says to the Lord, he says, Lord, Lord, I prayed and you didn't save me. He said, I sent you a four-wheel drive. I sent you a boat. I sent you a helicopter. And you rejected it. We don't know how God is going to answer our prayer. And you think, well, these are all stories from the Bible of hundreds of years ago. What about now? Does God still provide? He provided that message from Psalm 23 to me the other day. I was blown away. I thought, how did that lady know that I've been just looking at Psalm 23 that day? A guy in our church came to me just recently and he's just started a new business in town and it wasn't going too well, partly because it's seasonal and winter's not the best time for him. I said, look, he just wasn't getting any work. And of course, you get no work, you get no income. So we prayed about it and he came to me two days later. We prayed on a Thursday and he says on Friday, three jobs came in. He couldn't believe it because we probably lack faith that God is going to answer our prayer. Sometimes God provides miraculously, sometimes unexpected ways, supernaturally. And that can happen, and it's fantastic when it happens. Sometimes we can't even believe it. But we're not to take for granted the abilities that God has given us to earn, the jobs he's given us, the family he's given us, the church family, the friends. But let's just look at the last slide, number five. The greatest provision of all, the ultimate treasure, is God's Son. See, Buddhism doesn't provide. Hinduism has 300 million gods, but there's no provision. There's no love. There's no relationship. Muslim has Allah, but it's all about judgment. It's not about love or provision. But in Romans 8, verse 32, he did not spare his own son, but he gave him up for us all. How will he not give us all things? In the well-known verse in John 3.16, For God loved the world so much that he gave, he provided his son so that we will not perish, we'll have eternal life. Romans says the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life. Because we're rescued, because God tells us because we've sinned, we're going to face punishment. But God has taken the place. He's rescued us. He's ransomed us. He's paid the price. He's restored us. And he's reconciled us back to God. And there's no strings attached. It's not like the peach brandy. There's no strings attached. God gave his son. We have to accept it. We've got to come to a point in our life when we say, Lord, I know I've sinned. I know I'm a sinner like you talk about in Romans. I want to accept you now. I want to ask your forgiveness and accept your eternal life. As we looked at Abraham, he had to give his only son. God gave his only son. Abraham took two servants. Jesus was on the cross with two thieves. Abraham carried the wood. Jesus carried his cross. Abraham went to Moriah. God went to Calvary, probably the same place. They both willingly laid down their life. But at the end, God provided. Will you come to God today and say... Lord, my faith is weak. Lord, I want you to be my shepherd. I want you to lead me. I want to take your refreshing, your guidance, your leading, your provision in every way. Lord, be my shepherd. If you haven't done that, today's the best day to do it because you don't know what tomorrow brings. I'm going to pray and then we're going to put a song up here. Um, you're welcome to go and get your coffee. It's, it's a version of the 23rd Psalm. And the words are up there too. And I, yeah, I just encourage you to sit and listen and uh, 
read those words as we go. Lord, we're thankful that you are the God of provision, that you have provided everything we need. You've given us gifts and abilities to do things. And Lord, may we never take for granted what you have already given us before we ask for so much more. We thank you for your provision of Jesus dying on the cross for us so that we have eternal life. Lord, touch each of our hearts. Open our hearts to uh, renewing, to refreshment. And may we follow you as our shepherd. In Jesus' name, amen.